You've got one group saying, I want Dropbox, another one saying, I want Google Docs, another one saying, I want Office 365. As an IT department, which do you choose? Those of you that know me know I have a huge heart for education. It's not only what I do, but it's also what the company I started 10 years ago does. It, it supports technology in educational environments. So, so when I stumbled on this school in Australia that, that rolled out technology at what I would call a record pace, a single day because of COVID-19, rolled out iPads to kindergartners, uh, Office 365, that is uh, Microsoft Teams uh, with a thousand channels and remote classrooms rooms in what they called their Monday D-Day. I grabbed Dave and Dave from Central Coast Grammar School and, and did about a two-hour interview with them. And I'm, I'm giving you select pieces where I'm like, man, that's just so good. So, so I, I, without, I, I want to jump into it uh, and, and show you. But, but here is the question I was posing. You have all of these different technology platforms. You could call it a technologically ubiquitous environment. How do you choose to go with, with that one or that one? How do you how do you get gain acceptance so fast among the people that you're supporting? So I'll come back at the end, but I want to let that interview answer some of those questions. Sure. So looking back at, at, um, at this, you know, looking at the whiteboard of what, what happened, um, what, is there anything that in hindsight you would have done differently? Uh, whether it be, you know, I, I, it's, I don't know how you guys even, did you sleep over that weekend before D-Day? I mean, it was like uh, the, that, that Monday, it, it, it's epic. It's like the, it, it, it should be memorialized as the most, that, like you, you did what would typically be a year of rollouts in a day and, and it worked. Um, so, so looking back, like, so, so I, I say that with the premise of like, what you accomplished was nothing short of a miracle. Um, but what is there anything that you would have done differently? Did you sleep? First of all, I, I, I've got to know that. Did you, did you just like coffee through the entire I, weekend? I, David Nichols is a bit too humble, but he, he did a, no, he did a stellar job over that weekend. And he, he's usually, uh, you know, he likes his, likes going to bed a bit early. Then he gets up super early. But I know he was online at like midnight and 2 a.m. because I'm a night owl. So I'm up asking questions and he's answering them. You know, I'm saying, how's, how's the OneDrive going? How, you know, da, 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 da. Um, but I reckon it'd be worth Nichols to uh, jump in. What, what could we have done differently in hindsight? Um, well, the first question, did I sleep? Not really that week. Um, from that Friday before the Monday, the Tuesday, Wednesday, of that week we moved to this platform, not really, because uh, even after we had done the migration, our help desk was getting slammed with tickets, you know, parents saying, how do I open this? How do I do that? I can't see this. Um, you know, some of them just saying, my Wi-Fi is not good enough. Can you give any assistance? And we were trying to help them as best we can. So, yeah, didn't really sleep that whole week. Um, in terms of what would I do different, if I had more time, I'd want to have spent more time talking to the key stakeholders staff, parents, students, even, you know, more time talking to the executive. It was very much, uh, you know, flying by the seat of our pants, you know, going as fast as we could. Um, so when you, when you say you talk said, to we, them, we did are what you I, thinking training? Are you setting expectations? Like what, what kind of things would both. you have done? Well, even to figure out, you know, do, um, you know, do all uh, uh, teachers have facility at their house, whatever, to do remote learning, you know? Do we need to get anything? Um, one of the things we very quickly realized is the webcam, uh, the microphones on their laptops were not good enough, so we had to order headphones. Mm -hmm. And then we had to get them out to them because we'd had half of them rolled out, but then, of course, they were told to social distance and stay at home. So, you know, organizing that. Um, students with the same problem, you know, some of them, uh, the, our school had been very big on for a long time, not everyone, you know, students shouldn't have a webcam. So we were buying laptops without mm -hmm. webcams. Suddenly, the people are going, I don't have a webcam. How can I use this? And we're going, well... Sorry, you know, we're going to have to do the best we can because we, we can't afford to go and buy hundreds of webcams because people are, you know, selling them for ridiculous amounts now. Um, so things like that. I mean, yeah, you know. So, Jeremy, something else on that Monday, the D-Day, so David mentioned we're handing out headphones. So literally, we, we said, okay, you know, execute remote learning plan. 
Uh, dear staff, please come down and collect your headset and uh, from help desk, but stay two metres apart from each other because, you know, social distancing. And so we literally had a line out of the door and around, around the building because they're all going to be two metres apart, yeah. right? And so all coming down, we're handing out headphones um, that they then go and plug into their laptop so they can log into the Teams meeting in 10 minutes. Mm. You know, that, that, it, it was such a, um, it was a pretty crazy day. Um, just building on what David said about the, the preparation and the planning. So we as a school didn't want to launch Teams or publish all of these Teams to the students until we were sure we were going to use it. So from that perspective, we were kind of in this, uh, you know, technically difficult situation of needing to be able to push a button and then rapidly publish or deploy all these teams. I would much more have preferred, as many other schools did, to have launched a Teams platform, you know, weeks earlier with a thousand teams in it, had time to train students and staff, uh, you know, before this kind of D-Day happened. Um, but our school leadership didn't want to go down a virtual classrooms platform, train teachers on virtual classrooms, introduce another tool to the digital ecosystem uh, and with potential for, you know, student abuse and that type of thing, unless it was absolutely going to be needed. And the COVID-19 situation in Australia was evolving kind of really rapidly. So it really was this kind of really compressed time frame. And, um, you know, our, our headmaster and our leadership did not want to close the school unless they were directed or it was absolutely necessary. And so this move, you know, we believe strongly that face-to-face -face teaching is superior to an online uh, platform. No matter how good the online platform is, face-to-face -face teaching is superior. So they did not want to move to that unless they had to. And so you've got this really difficult balance situation of, uh, you know, we don't want to spend too much time and effort training staff, deploying this thing if we're not going to use it versus, okay, now it looks inevitable, we're going to have to build it. So, you know, David Nichols and Identity One basically uh, prepared Microsoft Teams on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you know, they built a script basically so that when we were told we could push that button and deploy these thousand teams using the API, and we weren't able to push that button until Monday afternoon. So we would have loved to have pushed the button a week or two weeks earlier. Right. But, uh, you know, they didn't want teams suddenly popping up on all these student devices, students able to log into these teams with other students. Those students doing that before our staff had even been trained on teams. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, you can kind of get the... This, this evolving picture. Oh, we, yeah, we went um, through the, the same thing. We were, we, that, that was one of the, as, as everybody was rolling out teams at some of our schools, uh, th they were like, well, will students be able to chat and video chat? And, you know, like, ah, no, we can't have that. Like, and, you know, how, how can we, how can we lock that down? There was a lot of concern like that. Yep. Yeah. So for our first three weeks, we had a uh, default policy position. Students could not use webcams in teams. And then after the first three weeks of using Microsoft Teams, which was last term for us, term one, we then had a two-week holiday break. We're now in week one of term two. We've just started. So this is the Thursday and students have been learning since Tuesday. Staff were doing professional development on the Monday this week. But basically only from Tuesday this week have webcams been enabled for students in Teams. So, uh, and that's, you know, that's caused some concern because obviously as soon as the student webcams are enabled, that's a novel thing. They're very excited, particularly the younger ones. So classroom management becomes, you know, the roll call goes from being 10 minutes to half an hour because all the kids are talking to each other. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so thinking in hindsight, are you thinking that you would have turned on the webcams earlier or that you shouldn't have turned on the webcams or, or, or it just, it is what it is. Uh, in hindsight, um, we would have loved to have had some time to have deployed it, trained staff and teachers, and then actually done some kind of testing 
those types of things might then have become more apparent. But at the same time, we do have this culture of, you know, rapidly evolving or being able to rapidly evolve to serve the school's needs. And so we've been able to kind of deliver. And that's okay. You know, I've got heads of school who um, were not that comfortable with the idea that student webcams would be enabled and they've seen the benefit that that can have. And so now they've decided we'll deploy it. And that's all right. It's, it's great that, you know, these are our educational leaders making those types of decisions. It's not really a IT technology thing. And so we, uh, we've had a change of policy and uh, that's great. Yep. What advice, and you, you already gave some great, great advice, but, but what advice would you give to schools that maybe aren't as, as, um, as experienced as, as you guys are with technology? So a lot of the schools that, that are out there are a mix of Google Classroom, you know, some Dropbox, some Office 360, you know, so, so kind of picture that environment. What advice would you give those schools as they are stepping into, I mean, because this, this will have a mark on how education happens in the future, for good or for bad or for both. What advice would you give them as they are stepping into this same world? Mr. Nichols. Um, work with the teachers. Um, I've been in several schools in my career and the ones that have been successful are the ones that listen to the teachers and don't just try to have an IT person pick a platform and force it down them, uh, down their throat. You know, you, you need to work with your teachers, you need to work with your students. I always say here, IT can find the solutions, but unless the teachers are prepared to follow you and prepare, give you the advice on what the best platform is for them, it's not going to work. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a tech person, I've always worked in tech, never had a background in teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't know how a classroom operates effectively. Mm -hmm. And you know, so you, you need to talk to the teachers. Um, they're the ones that know what happens day to day, how it works. Uh, yeah, and even now they're giving us feedback of small things where you know, students have discovered some workaround to get into old meetings so they can chat, you know, and things that I would never have thought of looking at. But the students have figured out, they've told the teachers type thing and the teachers tell us because we listen to them and they know the grammar IT department has an open door. Mm -hmm. You know, we will hear your feedback. We're not just going to say, go away, you're being annoying. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're the ones face to face with the students and know what's best. So, yeah. My takeaway point, Jeremy, would be educational leadership is key. It doesn't matter what IT platform you want to deploy or what direction you want to go in. If it's not actually driven by the educational leadership of the school, it's not going to work. And so getting their buy-in, having them drive it, you know, what you want is the principal or headmaster of the school or the heads of school to be banging on your door saying, we need a virtual classroom platform. You know, what are my options? How quickly can you deploy it? What tools have you got? Get back to me tomorrow or get back to me this afternoon. That's what you want. You want them driving it, right? You don't want IT going to them saying, oh, I think we need a virtual classroom platform and these heads of school and headmasters going, oh, I don't know what that is. I don't think it's that important. But, you know, if you want to go do it, go do it, that type of thing. Um, success will hang on that. And uh, you, you need that buy-in from teachers. Like our teachers in a really difficult situation adapted so quickly and engaged with Microsoft Teams, but they did it because they understood the value of the tool for delivering teaching and learning outcomes and they care about the kids. So if it all comes back to that, if you're a teacher now thinking, I have a choice of just posting instructions on the learning management system and my students can go and read that and work through it in their own time or I can, you know, spend five or ten minutes at the start of the lesson going through the instructions and chatting to them, which is better, or I can spend 40 minutes of the one hour lesson time actually explaining and teaching some of these concepts and then asking them to do this in their own time, what's better? Those teachers can make those decisions for themselves and generally their motivation will be, I will do that thing which is best for my students. And from that perspective, they'll be really willing to engage with the platform. They're not going to be very willing to engage. You know, if you just tell teachers, oh, you have to log in every day and run Teams and do a virtual classroom and have a video conference, 
they're just going to be rolling their eyes going, like, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. Why they, you know, why they need to use it. And so I'm actually kind of, you know, it's, it's a great story, I guess, the Central Coast Grammar School story, the way our teachers have adapted to this uh, virtual classroom platform. But I actually think it's going to have some incredible long-term good for us from an IT perspective. Yeah. Because like many other teachers around the world and people in all walks of life, not just teachers, there are always some that are reluctant to engage with technology. And some of them are, you know, they drag their feet and they're not that keen. Now, when you're sudden, and some of them have fears about technology, when you're suddenly thrown into a situation where, you know, it's a pandemic, everyone has to stay at home if they can and work from home and study from home and teach from home and learn from home, uh, and suddenly they have had to learn this tool, they literally saw teams, learnt about teams on the Monday afternoon and on the Tuesday morning they were using it. Yeah. I'm hoping that that will last in their memory for a long time of, you know what, I learned a whole new platform, a whole new tool and even modified my teaching because we had to for the kids and when we turn around in six months or a year's time and say, hey, we've got this other tool we'd like you to have a look at, they'll be like, why not? You know, I learned the last one overnight uh, and it worked great. Um, and so hopefully it actually, you know, really reduces that fear level. It really um, encourages them to engage because they've kind of been forced to suddenly quickly learn this new new tool. Hopefully that means that, you know what, I can learn these tools really quickly. Yeah. Uh, and so it takes away a lot of that reluctance and that fear yeah. so hopefully that's a really good um you know outcome going forward I, th I think i think there's going to be case studies for decades on on how covid has changed the world and i think you're you're nailing it with one yeah. of i mean it's it, there's a totally different emotional response of you know jump in the water swim it, it, well i don't i don't want you know versus you know you, you just got dropped in the water you, you gotta swim you know it, yeah. or you're or you're gonna sink and so it feels like people have really really uh adapted well that would have typically resisted uh that kind of change yep. all right i want to bring it back right here there's so much more to that interview and you'll see more little clips and, and pieces as time goes on and I'm, just, I'm just taking bits of wisdom that i've grabbed from that and, and the piece that i get here is we me, myself I'm, I'm the biggest one of this get so excited about some technology that we can see that will that will really benefit things we skip exactly what CCGS does, right? We see something, and I'll, I'll use myself because I do this. I'm like, that would be awesome. If they would just do that, then, then this, and then, and then I'm like, I'm gonna roll that out. And I spend days rolling out this technology and I'm like, look at this. And, and I, I'm often faced with a bunch of like blank stares, like, well, um, you know, and I'm like, but it's amazing. Whereas if I would have flipped the tables and just gotten the people together that I'm actually trying to help and, and sit with them and say, hey, I found some different things. Here's some different options. Here's my thoughts, but you choose, you choose. And, and if they're like, well, we think, you know, it's like, okay, I will back away from that and let you guys figure it out. Remember, as technologists, we are here to support others' decisions. We can influence those decisions. We can even help spur those decisions on. But at the end of the day, we are a support entity, right? We are not the ones making the decisions. And the faster that we can, we can catch that, the faster we can gain such, such momentum with our ability to roll out technology so well. So that being said, I, I, I could circle around a, a thousand times different scenarios just based on that, the, the few pieces of, of wisdom that came out of that CCGS uh, interview. But if you want technology to be accepted, allow the people that are using it to make that decision. It's that simple.